Where the bad kids go. Interior house, unknown time, basement. A dark, dank place, cold, a void. A light bulb hangs in a corner and shines dully with a hum over the foot of the wooden stairs that line one wall. Cinder block walls wait for proper insulation. The ceiling is the exposed underside of the house, lines of wooden beams and piping. The floor, a slab of concrete, and then the crawl space, an old wooden floor flap built into the far wall of the basement, shrouded in darkness. Something about this crawl space seems wrong, bad. This place reeks of evil. Off screen, the door to the basement bursts open and a boy screams, begs, pleads. Mommy, no! No! Off screen, stomping down the stairs. Don't take me down there, please! Off screen, dragging, kicking, more begging. Helen Lambert, thirties, drags young Jesse, eight, across the floor and toward the crawl space as he kicks and screams. She swings the door flap open and hooks it to the ceiling. She picks young Jesse up and shoves him inside. He coughs and groans as he rises on the dirt floor of the crawl space. Darkness surrounds him, save for the dull lights spilling in from the open door flap. Helen unhooks the door flap. She lets it fall. Young Jesse pushes himself toward the crawl space entrance. No! The door flap slams shut, cut to black. Title, Where the Bad Kids Go, over black. It's been 16 years since my mother tried to kill me. Interior house, night, Helen's bedroom. Helen sits upright in her bed. She's thin, getting pale and has bags beneath her eyes. A liquor bottle sits on her bedside table. A lamp on the table shines dully, basking her in light, but leaves everything else in darkness. She suffered from depression that got worse while she had me. Her boyfriend at the, at the time, Trent, never really wanted a kid, but he was left with taking care of me anyway. Arguing begins to fade in, interior house night. Jesse's bedroom, arguing off screen. Young Jesse, three, hides under the bed with his hands over his ears. He sobs quietly as he stares out of his bedroom door and down the hall into Helen's bedroom. My mother once told me that one night, when I was three, they became tangled in a heated argument. Helen's bedroom. Helen, twenties, and Trent Williams, twenties, half-empty bottle in hand, scream at one another. And he attacked her. Smash cut to Trent on top of Helen, hands wrapped tightly around her throat. She claws at his arms, tries to pry his hands off, chokes and wheezes. Police sirens fade in from outside of the house. Trent hears them and jumps off of Helen, who rolls over and continues to cough for air. He runs to the window and opens it. He hops out. He runs into the darkness of the night. He was found two days later. He served in prison and was slapped with a restraining order of 350 feet. As he disappears into the night, everything fades to black. Over black. The attack only made her depression worse, which made her alcoholism worse, which ultimately made her behavior worse. Interior house, over time. Begin montage. Kitchen. Helen backhands young Jesse, which nearly knocks him onto the floor. Cut to hallway. She yanks him forward. He trips over himself and smacks into a wall and onto the floor. She kicks him toward his bedroom. Cut to basement. A flash of young Jesse's frail body as it tumbles down the basement stairs. Helen begins her descent down the stairs into the dark basement. And then one night, she tried to kill me. End montage. Interior house, night. Jesse's bedroom. Young Jesse, 11, sleeps in bed. He tosses and turns in his sleep. He shoots up, awake now, and looks around his room. He stops his gaze at a dark corner. Someone stands there. It's the silhouetted figure of Helen, 30s, skinny and frail. She shakes almost uncontrollably and whispers incoherently. Helen steps forward. Her whisper is becoming more understandable. She repeats the same words again and again. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Young Jessie sits sorry, up. Helen takes another step forward. She raises her arms above her head. In her hands, a large kitchen knife. In a flash, young Jessie jumps out of bed. Helen hisses through gritted teeth as she watches him sprint out of the bedroom. Hallway. Young Jesse snatches a cordless phone off of a half-moon table in the hallway. He runs into the hallway bathroom and slams the door shut. It clicks locked from behind. Bathroom. Moments later. Young Jesse sits in the bathtub with the cordless phone at his ear. His face is red from crying. Tears stream down his cheeks. In the bright light of the bathroom, bruises and scratches and scars are noticeable all over his body. 
the other side of the door, Helen pleads and begs for him off screen. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Hallway. Moments later, Helen sits on the floor and leans against the bathroom door. She continues to plead and beg. Behind Helen, police officers enter the hallway with guns drawn and flashlight beams on her. They bark orders at her. One police officer picks her up off the floor and handcuffs her. Another officer shines their flashlight onto young Jesse's bedroom. The knife glimmers on the bed as the officers lead Helen out of the hallway. When asked why I didn't call the police sooner, I told them what my mother had always told me if I ever did. Smash cut to flashback, close up. Helen's stained teeth and chapped lips, centimeters from young Jesse's ear. I'll slit your fucking throat open the moment they arrive. Back to scene, living room.